Hi everyone, Justin here from Belkers Wellness Center. Coming back at you today with another stretch and mobility routine and more specifically, this routine is actually uh, targeted towards helping to alleviate some low back pain um, that you may be feeling or any prolonged sitting that will lead to some strain on the back. So having said that, we've got seven exercises today. The first two are going to be um, releases, so foam rolling techniques to release some typically tight muscles that contribute to low back pain. Then we're going to move to two stretches to kind of do the same thing to help release, release some tension. Uh, then we're going to do three activation exercises that can help to activate some underactive musculature that can help again to alleviate some of that back pain that you may be feeling um, from doing a lot of sitting. So having said that, let's go ahead and get into the routine. We're going to start with either a foam roller or an alternative for the foam roller. As I've gone over previously is a hard walled um, cup that can withstand putting quite a bit of your body weight behind it. You could also use a can of soup or any other canned good that you have. I would caution though to use a towel to put on top of it to provide you a little bit of give. Same thing with the um, hard walled cup. And then uh, finally, you could use any type of hard ball that you have. So I've got like a little trigger point ball here, but a tennis ball, softball, baseball, lacrosse ball, anything that you have um, can work as well. So having said that, we're gonna start with something called the TFL release and the TFL is basically uh, one of your hip flexor muscles that, that sits right here and how we're going to find that is we're going to stand up and then we're going to turn our toe in while placing our hand just below the hip bone. When I go in I'm going to feel a muscle pop up to the surface. When you feel that, that's your TFL. So what I want you to do is once you turn your foot and you find that, hold, hold your hand there so that you know where it is because as soon as you come out of that internal rotation with the foot, it's going to go back down away from the surface and you're going to have a hard time finding it. So now that I've got it found, I'm going to take either my foam roller or whatever I'm using for that or the ball if I have it. The ball is a little better because it's a little more pinpoint, but you can still definitely get the TFL with something a little bigger like the cup or a foam roller. Um, so whatever you have, you're gonna stick it right there and then you're gonna position yourself to lay on that. And so if you can see here, I've got it positioned on the TFL and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to relax that leg and then I'm rolling side to side, trying to find tender spots. You're gonna know when you get on it. It's gonna scream at you a little bit, it should be a little bit uh, uncomfortable, so slight discomfort, but shouldn't be super painful. If it is, come off of it. Your chances are you're on the wrong spot if that's the case. And then I, and when I find that tender spot, I'm just gonna sit here, 30 seconds. Like I said, I can kinda do small shifts with my body weight and rotate my hips a little bit to get in there a little deeper. Um, and then, of course, 30 seconds on one side, I gotta do it on the other. So again, I'll stand up, turn the toe in, find that muscle, pin the ball or the foam roller there, and then lay on top of it and apply pressure. 30 seconds on this side, and that'll be it for the TFL release. From there, we're gonna move to a tried and true foam roll technique and muscle, which is the piriformis and the upper outer hip area. So we've done this one before. Um, it is a great one, definitely one of my favorites. So you're gonna cross that leg over. You're gonna position yourself onto whatever you're using to foam roll. In my case, it's this uh, double walled insulated cup. And then I am positioning it on the outer hip, so I'm gonna rotate towards the side that has the leg crossed over. And then again, find a tender spot, sit on it. I can do a little bit of shifting if I want to introduce some cross friction. And then I'm gonna stay here for 30 seconds. 
Once we've got 30 seconds on this side, which I'd say we're about there now, of course we're going to do the same thing on the other. So I'll rotate, give you the view from this side, placing it down. Whichever side I'm attacking, I'm crossing the leg over, and then I'm going to pick myself up and position myself onto whatever I'm using to roll. Notice I'm going towards the side that I've got crossed over. What that does is it brings that piriformis muscle to the surface a little more. It's still deep underneath um, your big glute, max, and med muscles, but you can still get some pressure to it and help to relax it. So 30 seconds on this side, and then we're done with the roll techniques. So you can go ahead, set those off to the side. Next, we're gonna move to two stretches. The first is a lat stretch. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find something to grab onto. In this instance, um, I've got a TRX right here, but you could definitely use um, any pole that you have. If you've, got, if you've got a wall or doorknob that you could grab onto and kind of position yourself so that, so that you can uh, grab onto it. All I'm gonna do is sink my hips, bend my knees, and then straighten my arms to feel the stretch underneath the lats. We've done this one as well, it's been a little while. Um, but tightness here can also contribute to some of that low back pain. And then we're staying here for 30 seconds. Once you've got 30 seconds here, you can go ahead and come out of that. And then we're gonna move to a staggered stance, psoas stretch. So basically, in this position, I'm gonna spread my feet, stagger them. I'm gonna turn the back foot in. So notice it's straight right now. I'm turning it in. And then I am going to try to shift my body weight forward while I keep my heel towards the floor. So I wanna straighten the back leg, bend the front, and then I can take the arm up overhead if I want. So I'm leaning forward. And then I can enhance the stretch even more for this 30 seconds if I rotate towards the front leg. So rotating towards the front leg gets a better stretch. It's really important that you keep that back leg straight. That's 30 seconds on that side. Then we're going to switch it up. Let me give you the view from this side. Split stance. I'm straightening the back leg. Leaning slightly forward into the front leg as it's bent. And then I am feeling that stretch by turning the toe in and taking the arm up overhead. Okay, from here I'm feeling that stretch through the front of the hip. Again, I can enhance this by rotating towards the front leg. So towards the front leg, 30 second hold. And then I'm going to come out. And that's it for the stretches that we're going to do. And then we're going to move to three activation exercises. The first one is a dead bug. So we're starting on our backs. I'm raising, bending the knees and raising them up to point towards the ceiling. And then my arms follow suit. From here, I'm dropping the foot and opposite arm while keeping my core tight and pressing my low back into the floor to come down, tap with the foot, and then come back up. Core stays tight, you're breathing, going nice and slow. We're doing 10 on each side. And the important part here is that as you're extending, which is bringing that foot down and that arm up, I am staying as tight as I can here. So I hope you're counting. You're doing 10 on each side, relax the head. I've got six, here's seven. Going nice and slow. Excuse that car driving by. There's eight, here's nine. And then the last one on each side, slow and controlled, keeping my belly tight. And uh, then up to where you started. And uh, then relax. Once you've got 10 dead bugs on each side, we're going to rotate to hands and knees position, quadruped. And we're going to do basically the same general movement pattern, but it's going to be working the opposite muscles. 
So again, I'm hands and knees, and then I'm going to extend out opposite arm and leg. Before I do that though, wrists are stacked underneath the shoulders, knees are stacked underneath the hips, and I want to tighten my belly and my core like someone's gonna punch me before I extend out. I'm extending out just for a second, and then I'm coming back in, and I'm doing the same thing on the other side. We're going 10 on each side. What I don't want to see is you relax here in the belly and then try to get up as far as you can. You're staying tight and you're trying to make yourself as long as you can. Almost like if you had something balancing on your back, it wouldn't fall off because you're going too high. So belly stays tight, extend out. Slight hold, one to two seconds, and then bring it back in. Knocking my foam roller over. We've got six on each side, so we're going four more. Here's seven. Here's eight. Making myself as long as possible. Driving the fingertips of one arm and the opposite heel of the other arm straight behind me. So towards either wall. Here's nine. And the last one on each side. Slight hold. And that's it for the bird dog. The very last activation exercise we're gonna do is a front plank with a reach. So what you're gonna do is Start from an elbow plank, squeeze your glutes, keep your core tight, spread your feet about hip width apart, and then from here, I am going to try to resist rotation through the hips as I reach in front of me and then put my elbow back down. Reach, keeping the core tight. We're going five on one side. Here's four. And five, let me show you from the other side. If this is too difficult for you and you're fine that your hip is dropping when you go to do your reach, so it looks more like this, then drop to your knees. No worries needing to drop to your knees, that just shortens the lever a little bit. And then from there, you're staying tight, knees are hip width apart again, and then we're just reaching five times, remembering to breathe, and there's the fifth one. Again, you could go from the feet to make it a little harder if you wanted. Once you've got five on each side for those front plank with reaches, you are done.